What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One, and today I'm wearing the black shirt in another episode of For the Greater <laughs> This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below, put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. first. And that is what King Naga did. He says, have the Grey Knights ever faced off against the Custodes? And if not, how much better would they fare? Then I guess the Space Marines, because this is coming from a greater war where, where we were discussing the, the verses of the Deptus Custodes versus the Space Marines. Yeah. Um, now you got to remember that the Grey Knights, they're still Space Marines, although there are a few things that set them apart. Uh, main one is that their gene seed doesn't come from a Primarch, it comes from the Emperor himself. Great. So they have some similarities with like having, you know, a lot of power. They're meant to fight against warp creatures, demons, chaos, that kind of thing. But just because they're built for that reason doesn't mean they still can't take on the Adeptus Custodes. Right. The Custodes, on the other hand, are far above and beyond the strength, speed, tactics, durability of a regular space marine. So the playing field is kind of leveled out, but I still feel that the Custodes will take it probably seven times out of ten. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, they'll fare a little bit better than regular space marines, um, but there still is a big difference between a space marine and an Adeptus Custodes, right. even though the rumor is that the gene seed uh, comes from the Emperor. But let's remember that like the Adeptus Custodes don't have any gene seed organs or anything like that. They right. are just superhuman. Right, enhanced humans. Yeah. yeah. Taken from or like orphan-aged kids, yeah. indoctrinated, and just... Yeah, these guys are the best of the best without being space marines. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, magical powers might be, or not magical powers, <laughs> warp powers might give them like that extra one victory out of ten. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, yeah they, yeah, they would get it. When it comes to like notable characters and stuff like that, that's when things start to get iffy. Because you have like Constantine Valdor, Trajan Valorous, Drago, who took out a demon Primarch. Just barely. It got retconned. It wasn't a stomp anymore. But whenever you're seeing battles take place, usually it's in the eyes of the Imperium or whatever faction you're reading, like the story taking place from or Codex. So the outcome could come out any which way. But I still believe that the Custodes will take, take the victory. Yeah. Um, another thing, too, is on the tabletop, these two armies play very, very similarly. They're very elite very powerful each individual um, unit but I feel like the Grey Knights will outnumber the Custodes and since their ninth edition codex is more recent than the Custody one they've got a little bit of an upper hand on it um, yes they can wield hammer handed to make their attacks stronger they've got dread knights to take on like the Telamon heavy dreadnoughts the other contemporary dreadnoughts that they have but that I think it changes. So while the Custody will win lore-wise based on the universe, tabletop I think the Grey Knights will come out on top more times than, than not. Yeah, and that's funny how that happens where it, it is going against the lore. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even think it is like the addition uh, portion that's kind of messes it up. Uh, also just the fact that Grey Knights have an entire turn that the Adeptus Custodes don't have. Right. Warp powers on the tabletop can do damage. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have an elite force, um, because all of those, what is the, well, I mean, just all the offensive warp powers would just hurt them. Yeah. All those um, mortal, mortal wounds. wounds. Yeah. However, they're not just going to be taking mortal wounds left and right. I believe they call, they have like the Aegis of the Emperor or something like that. Oh, cool. So they do get a feel no pain against uh, mortal wounds. Hmm. So the custodians will survive, just not as much as they should yeah. lore wise. Um, if you guys want to see more on this topic, I did do a Grim Dark Battles, uh, Trajan Valorous against Caldor Drago. So check it out. So I go over their stats, their weapons, their notable feats and battles, and then I do a little mock scenario to see who would come out on top. So check it out. Yeah. This next question comes from Antoine Ewing. What does One Mind Syndicate think? about GW charging $550 for their new action figures in Australia, and would either of you guys buy it? Hell no. <laughs> that what? is crazy. There's dude. an action figure? They're coming out with an action figure? Yeah, or is it, it that one? It's not that one, but oh. it's basically like that one. 
Oh, with the, with the gravis, armor. Yeah, 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 the yeah. gravis armor. That is insane. For yeah. them to think that this is a good idea is crazy. Is that just Australia? I think, it, yeah. It, oh, okay. Any GW product in Australia, the price bumps up astronomically. Isn't everything in Australia just more expensive because of shipping? Shipping, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's insane that people... Mm-hmm. I mean, there are people that are going to buy it, though. Right. Um, and you have to keep that in mind. Um, that the reason that the prices are so high is because we still pay for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like you're saying, we won't pay for it. We would not pay for it. But there's still those people out there that would. Yeah. And it's... Like, if I'm going to spend $550 for GW, it's going to be in an army that I can actually paint, build, play. This action figure, like, it's just going to sit on your shelf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a flex. It is, yeah. Yeah. It's like, look at me. Right. (laughs) But, um, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, you could always repaint it for your own chapter. chapter. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, they kind of do look cool. They're, They're pretty big and like articulate <laughs> so i know uh, gw is really worried about like 3d printed um mm-hmm. minis and stuff but when it comes to these action figures you can definitely 3d print these action figures with uh like a shitty uh, 3d printer mm-hmm. so e- even that like if you think about it like why would you even spend 550 when you could probably go on etsy and get a similar product yeah 3d printed one but still right next question this one is by Missingo Ocho the Moon Man. How often are Space Marine chapters forgotten? Like, not forgotten over time, but shuffled around in Imperial records and out of context so long that folks just <coughs> stop being aware of them. Know of any examples? Love you guys to death. The new show format is super awesome, and the Emperor protects. The Emperor protects. Um, I don't have any off the top of my head that I can think of, uh, but it is something that's pretty common. Um, And like you said, it's not so much that, like the because of their autonomy, they go off on crusade. Usually, they are a crusading chapter. Mm -hmm. They have their own ways of resupplying themselves, of getting recruits, all that kind of stuff. So then, when they come back, some of the imperial um, authorities might not recognize this chapter, and they would have to go into the 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 uh, the books basically to Mm -hmm. find who this chapter really is. Um, and really, that's just a flaw in the bureaucracy of the Imperium and the High Lords of them not really keeping track of the Space Marines. But at the same time, it does show how like the Space Marines don't need humans. Right. Uh, they don't need the huge, um, you know, war machine of the Imperium. Uh, they can they can fend for themselves. Right. And that's a big thing that the Adeptus Custodes were hesitant or I guess afraid of. Um, Because they thought space marines are too autonomous. They can too easily go renegade and go against the Imperium that they were made to protect. So that's, like like you're saying, that's a big issue that benefits space marines, but also kind of hinders the Imperium in general. Yeah. And as far as, like, throwing out a number, I'm not, I mean, I'm not too sure. There's been um, quite a few chapters that I that I think uh, have that similar, like, plot line where, like, they were thought lost and then they came back. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to build that for a homebrew uh, chapter, uh, definitely do it. Yeah. And showcase it. Let us know, um, you know, what makes them different than right. the others. And there's many ways you could have them be forgotten. Maybe they got stuck in the sector of space that was surrounded by warp storms. Yep. Maybe they got eaten by, like, a leviathan of sorts and they're still alive inside that being and maybe they get regurgitated or they go into a crusade into like the cicatrix maledictum that kind of stuff yeah there's a lot of things you could make sense for that to happen yeah one of uh my favorite concepts of 40k and homebrewing is messing with time Mm -hmm. uh which the warp does so like even saying that the this your chapter that that is going to come back to the imperium they went as a fleet into the warp came out they thought they were only gone for like a couple months turns out that they were gone for an entire like century or two centuries or whatever Mm -hmm. that would be kind of cool and then it's like oh they were like the the bell of lost souls was rung for this chapter blah 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 but it's like nope they're back so it's like whoa that'd be kind of cool unring the bell (laughs) sir we can't do it unring it shinku kiritu ichika what will happen or what will things be like if isha is freed 
what would happen to the Imperium and to Nurgle as well as the Death Guard in this. So for Isha to be freed, there'd have to be some type of crusade or some type of force to actually go into the warp, go to the gardens of Nurgle, traverse <laughs> all this death, decay, and rot, probably fight Nurgle, because I don't think he'll give her up so easy, uh, and then go all the way out and into the material realm. Yeah, or you could also have like another chaos god um, steal her away. Slanesh, probably. Slanesh or Zinch, Mm because I feel like Zinch would be like, I'm going to use her for my tricks or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Releases her, uh, knowing that it would hurt Nurgle and knowing that down the road she's going to play a pivotal role in like the destruction of probably the Eldar and stuff like that. I Mm. think that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, now, um, what would happen if she came back? I think the Eldars would get a buff. Yeah, because like she is the goddess of rebirth. Maybe their uh, was it birth rate would go skyrocket. Yeah. Um, not just that, but they'd be able to summon avatars of Isha. Um, there'd be two actual living gods. You have the Segura, the laughing god, and then you got Isha. Because mm-hmm. uh, Cain's kind of like weird. Oh, you have Inead too. Yeah. Yeah. They have a lot of gods yeah. now. Um, there are some that are confirmed to be swallowed by Slanesh, but I don't know. Because, I mean, she's not a goddess that, like, goes out on the front line and fights. Like, that's not her thing. Oh, Isha? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she probably could if she wanted to. Mm-hmm. But still, it'd be more like a supplemental boost to their morale. Um, maybe they wouldn't be a dying race anymore. That actually made you, like, you just made me think of how awesome it would be if they brought back Isha, or they took Isha outside of the warp, but in an element like Dark Heresy, where then it becomes a, um, a plot point. Um, because I agree, like, we're, it, on the tabletop, we're not going to see the the, um, the return of Isha. It's not going to make a huge impact on the tabletop, but if you play an RPG like Dark Heresy, mm-hmm. then, yes, you can explore that concept of, like, these cults, um, spre- or not cults, what are they called? Um, paths? So this new path opened up uh, within the Eldar, uh, like the craft world stuff, and yeah, and yeah that'd be kind of cool. And they got new aspect warriors and that kind of thing. Yeah, um, which I guess could influence the tabletop because now you have a new avatar, a new <coughs> yeah, a new troop choice or something like that. Yeah. Um, but like where she is at currently, like it's not like she's just wasted away. She is super detrimental to having the ability for any sentient being to find a cure to the diseases of Nurgle. Yeah. Because yeah, when Nurgle experiments his toxins and whatnot on her, she then whispers the cure to um, the universe. Yeah. So it's like, oh, here's COVID. And then she's like, oh, you know, take the vaccine. <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, rumor has it that Isha's voice sounds like the Yin Yang twins. Mm-hmm. If you guys want an example, there's the whisper song. Hey, little man, let me whisper in your ear. ASMR. There you go. This next question comes from Eric Romero. How would a modern Necro? I think it means Necron. How would a modern Necron react to Necron tears? Either through time travel or stasis, would they want to kill it, or would they also almost venerate it? The Necrons will never venerate anything. They don't really even venerate... Well, yeah, no, because they don't have the... Um, what is it called? Because they're sentient. Well, the High Lords are sentient, yeah. but the rest of them um, are not. Right. And they don't venerate because they're just robots. Mm-hmm. Um, Soulless beings. Yeah, now, would like the Silent King, uh, Trays in the Infinite, would they venerate this Necron tier? No. No, because, I mean, that's what they were, and they were trying to get away from that. Yeah. Their bodies were prone to disease and old age, and they wanted a means to live longer or immortality. And that's, any, yeah. that, that's why they made that deal with the Catan, and they what got basically played into getting into these Necron bodies. If anything, the, the Necron tier that would show up to the Necrons, uh, the overlords would, just, overlords would just see that as a, um, like a... Um, like a little trinket, like mm-hmm. something cool to have. Maybe put it in the vaults. Uh, just like, oh, this is where we came from type of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like you said, they only live for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Well, not a couple of years, but like, I think like 10 to 15 years. So. Yeah, it's very, very small lifespans. Yeah. And even then, they built a huge dynasty. Yeah. Like they conquered the universe pretty much. Next question. 
Uh, this one is by Juan Jose Mendivil. Is there any evidence or context clues that the Chaos Gods are actively preventing other Chaos Gods from existing because competition and such? Um, kind of, but not really. <coughs> I feel like it's an indirect thing of having these four Chaos Gods be so strong and so powerful that any other minor god kind of just doesn't want to be, like, looked upon. Yeah. Because if the Chaos Gods notice you and they see you as a threat, you know, like, they're going to wipe you out. But the thing about Chaos is that in the warp, you could kill whatever you want, but it just it's just energy. It'll manifest back into itself. Mm-hmm. So if you kill, like, a greater demon of Nurgle, that would just go back to Nurgle, the Chaos God, who will then just use his energy to make another greater demon. Mm-hmm. Or empower another being to become a greater demon. Yeah. Rudar. This community needs to come together and make a reboot of Friday the 13th in the 40k universe. I was never big on Friday the 13th. Yeah. I uh, mean, I watched some of their movies here and there, like Jason X, when he was in space. That was, that was goofy. More it than was, yeah. Else. Didn't he slice a chick's boobs off? Of course. You have to. Yeah. I just remember the part where he like he takes this this girl, freezes her head in like liquid nitrogen, and then breaks it on the table, and like pieces go all over the place. Yeah, that type of horror I can deal with because it's not really like jump scares or blood or anything like that. It's just kind of well, I mean, kind of blood, but just uh, yeah, so so goofy. Mm-hmm. I was talking to a friend um, yesterday about uh, the old Leprechaun oh, movies. Yeah, I think Leprechaun that thing in the 40k universe would be really interesting because it's a mystical like Mm -hmm. warp entity um and you know he he also goes into space he goes into the hood (laughs) yeah so yeah leprechaun in the hive cities yeah (laughs) necromunda (laughs) yeah with the hive gangs (laughs) i've actually never watched any of those though the leprechaun movies yeah i saw one and like i was so young like anything scared me so Yeah. yeah yeah Uh, but who would you want to be Jason, like in the forty k universe? I'm just. I think like uh, probably a Thunder Warrior would be kind of cool, like a, a Thunder Warrior that was in stasis, got brought back to life, but he's not all there mentally, mm-hmm. and he's just kind of like out to kill everything yeah. because the Emperor tried to kill him, um, and then he's just chasing all these guardsmen and mm-hmm. stuff around. Um, yeah. Um, dark Eldar grotesques. Yeah. Those work too. They've already got like the helmet and they're all buff and whatnot. They don't go down easy. Yeah. 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 Uh, this question comes from Moon's Raven. How many limbs can a space marine lose? How badly hurt? Uh, before his only way of serving is inside of a dreadnought. A lot. Because <laughs> uh, the chapter master of the Ultramarines um, lost three of his four limbs fighting a swarm lord. And I mean... He didn't get put into a dreadnought. No. And, like, look at the Iron Hand models. Like, both arms are robotic. Mm-hmm. While one leg is always, like, a weird robotic leg. Mm-hmm. So er, all your limbs, all of them, right. can be removed, and you still don't have to be placed into a dreadnought. <laughs> yeah. It really depends on, like, your ability to function. Like, if your limbs get removed, but you still have, <coughs> like, the, the, I don't know, the will to fight for the Emperor... Um, chances are, if you do want to undergo the augmentations, you could still do it. Or they'll just put you in a dreadnought. It really depends. Yeah. This next question comes from Fox the Beast. Have you guys watched Watchmen on HBO or the movie? Or, like, read any of their comics? If so, do you think Mr. or Dr. Manhattan uh, would be worshipped in the 40k universe? Would he still be OP as fuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. That's actually a character that in the 40k universe could stand, like, up to probably the Chaos Gods. Yeah, dude's literally, like, OP as heck. Yeah, even though, now that I think about it, he's basically a Catan. That, yeah, that's, I was about to say that. Yeah. Because um, we don't know how the warp would react to him, because Catan are weak to, to warp stuff. Yeah. So maybe he is weak against the warp, but he's still really strong nonetheless. Because that's his whole thing, right? He's just, like, super... Like, he can bend the laws of physics and stuff, but, mm-hmm. but through the same bound... Or he has boundaries, they're not magical. Right. right. I think he, he he's bound by physics and stuff like that. Yeah. But I haven't seen Watchmen on HBO. I saw the movie years back. Um, I never really read any of the comics, but... Yeah. 
Yeah, I think one of my favorite scenes in any movie is with, um, uh, is it Rorschach? Oh, when he, like, points at him and he... Oh, no, when, like, he's in prison and then he's, like, he's uh, getting his lunch or whatever, like a regular cafeteria. Oh, yeah. And then he throws the boiling uh, oil onto, like, some prisoner and then he's, like, remember that you're not stuck. I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. And I thought that was, like, the most badass line of, like, damn. Yeah. This guy's a bad, bad mofo. Yeah, Rorschach, pretty cool. Um, he, he that actor plays some really like weird, mm-hmm. creepy dudes in in other TV shows though. Uh, he played a pedophile. He played a murderer. Yeah, it's pretty pretty weird. Can you imagine being an actor and just being like your agents like? So we got a role for you, <laughs> but guess what? You have to masturbate in a car. Yeah. I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, last question comes from Justice Seven Seven Seven. I saw that one too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why do the orcs call Space Marines beakies? Uh, because of the helmets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially the Raven Guard ones. They literally got beaks. Yep. Um, what mark of armor is that? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that's why. <laughs> I think my favorite orc um, nickname for another race is the Tin Heads. Or tin eds, uh, and that's for the necrons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do they call the Tau? Stupid. <laughs> yeah, I've always liked Umis, just because it's fun to yeah. say. Um, but yeah, those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening, and talk to you later. Yeah. As always, it's been the Sound Alchemist. Gersh one. And we are out. <laughs> Bye.